God is about to work some miracles in your life, in your situation. There's a miracle with your name on it. Something supernatural is about to take place in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And nobody can love us like Jesus. Do I have a witness in the house? All right, let's appreciate him with a mighty, mighty clap offering. Let's thank him for his love, his goodness. Thank him for his presence. Thank him for drawing you to himself today. No one can come except those whom God has drawn. Say, Lord, thank you for drawing me, for steering me. You are not here by coincidence. You are here because God drew you to be here. So thank him. He drew you, he drew me, he drew us because he has a plan for our lives. He wants to work something good for you. He wants to work something good in our lives. He wants, us to, he wants to take us to a better state. He wants to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We worship your presence. We celebrate your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the mighty testimonies we have heard this morning of your powerful deliverances in the lives of your people. Thank you for the interventions. Thank you, O oh God, for being an on-time God. Thank you for being faithful to your word. We give you praise. You are dependable. We worship you. This hour, I want to thank you also for drawing us to yourself. Unto you, indeed, is the garden of your people. We know it's your presence that makes all the difference. We are asking, oh God, that your presence will make the difference in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. As we look into your word today, speak to our heart. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, set the captives free, encourage the discouraged, strengthen the weak, give direction, O oh God, to the confused. We ask for assurance and the spirit of every participant in this service. Whatever the needs are, we thank you because we know you are able to stretch forth your hand to meet every need and grant every desire. We thank you because this is an appointment for beautification. So we, we know you are going to beautify our lives. Do it and take all the glory. Lord, take away every garment of sorrow, mourning, and put on us a fresh garment of praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are asking, oh God, that Lord, our heart, oh God, is rested in you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We take authority over Satan, over principalities, over powers, rulers of darkness of this world. We bind principalities in the name of Jesus. We frustrate Satan's intention against our lives, against anyone participating in this service, in-house, online, everywhere. In the name of Jesus, we break Satan's hold and grip over the lives and destiny of many. We ask that the captives are set free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we ask for the free move of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Godhead. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord another baby clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God. There is a miracle with your name on it. Something good is going to happen to you today. God has you on his mind. So I welcome you in the house. I welcome you on Zoom, I welcome you on Facebook, YouTube, FM TV Live, wherever you are watching from, we're glad to be part of this service. If you are watching on YouTube, we encourage you to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on your notification button so that every time we come on, you can be notified. You can be rest assured that every time we come on, God will turn on a blessing in your favor. If you're also watching on FM TV Live, our 24 hours, seven days a week, Faith and Miracle TV Network, we encourage you to keep watching. And in case you're not aware, we have a 24 hours, seven days a week, Faith and Miracle TV Network. It's called FMTVLive.com. We encourage you to watch and share the good news with your friends and family. If you're watching on Facebook, let us know what part of the world you are watching from. God bless you. Amen. I, I have a word from, from God for every one of us today. Are you excited to hear from God? What a mighty, mighty God we serve. What a mighty testimony we have heard today for his deliverance. And we pray that the good things that God has begun shall be permanent. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for that young man that God will spare his life Amen. and keep him in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for his mercy. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Madezi's testimony also. We thank God for that wonderful gift that God has given to you. Life is a gift from God. And we are grateful that God has given you opportunity and that blessing. Amen. Your testimony will be the next. I say your testimony is going to be the next in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to look into God's word. I'm excited about the message I'm about to preach or teach um, because this is a unique month for us. Uh, it's our month to establish and enter a covenant of positive development with God. So can we say this is the theme for the month. Every, every month God gives us a theme. Uh, so that we can focus and we can, you know, he can speak to us from that team. So this is, say, say, this is my month, this is my month. Of, establishing of establishing and entering, and entering a, covenant a covenant of positive development, of positive development. with God. With God. One more time, say, this is my month, this is my month. of establishing, of establishing and, entering and entering a covenant, a covenant. of positive development. Of positive development with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, what is a covenant? A covenant is simply an agreement between two people, two or more people, but in this case, between you or us and God. Hello, somebody. It's an agreement, or some people call it a contract. That means when you go into a covenant, you agree with God. God promises to bless us or to do something good for us when we agree and he gives us some covenant responsibility. And when we do it, then God blesses us. Amen. Hello, somebody. God is a God of love, but God is a God of covenant. Yes. So many people don't understand the covenant nature of God. That's why they miss out on the great things that God wants to do for them. God is a God of love. He loves everybody. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Even that there's a little card there. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has expressed his love. He has given his son. But for a person to have everlasting life or eternal life, you have to believe Amen. in the son. Even though God loves the world, he doesn't want anybody to perish. People are perishing every day. And God cannot break his covenant because God is a covenant keeping God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. We're going to look into the Bible. I want to see this is and many blessings that we need are delivered unto us on the platform of the covenant. Can we read the scripture? Can I say something that really occurred to me um, before I get into the message and it will help somebody? Yesterday as I was praying, I was just in God's face talking to God, talking to God. And suddenly, I believe it was Satan that just wanted to, you know, Sometimes when you're talking, Satan comes and wants to put some seed in your heart. He said to me, you are always praying. What if God is not real? Or the word of God is not true? So I kept praying. He said, I'm asking you a question. So I thought about it for a minute. Then I, as I was praying in the spirit, I got an answer for him. And I said to him, even if God's word is not true, and God is not true, do you have any alternative for me? <laughs> yeah. Is there any word, any book that guarantees such blessings, such truth that I can relate with? And there is none. Yeah. There is none. Yeah. That's the truth. There is none. I have done that research before, so I know there is none. Yeah. If you look at the promises of God, they are too fantastic that nobody, you see, you can have a desire 
but no guarantee that those desires will come to pass. But we, here we have a God that guarantees us and gives us assurance that when we take him at his word, he's going to perform what we want. Nobody else has that guarantee. No, nobody, nobody gives an assurance of such blessing. He said, call on me, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you know not that can make you great and mighty. Yes, That's why I pray. Amen. Nobody, nobody, no, no assurance, no, no other, no, no book, no prophet. I've been on the other side. That's the truth. No book, no prophet. I, I read the Quran. I read other books. I don't want to, you know, uh, bring any religion into it because there's no comparison. <laughs> but God is alive. So that gave me a faith boost Hallelujah. that at least if you are sick in your body you can go to God's word yes. and he can tell you that when you believe that by his stripes he took your infirmity and confess that and declare that you shall be healed yes. That's it. And many people who have gotten to a point of discouragement and despair, and they are looking, there is no hope anywhere. The word of God builds our hope. Yes. It gives us hope for tomorrow. The Bible says, in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, lie. promise. Yes. God cannot lie. Why would he promise us all these fantastic things? Does he want us to vote for him so that he can remain God on the throne? No. He doesn't want anything from us. But rather, he gives us everything that we want. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't want anything from us. He gives us everything that we desire. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, have this uh, assurance in your spirit that this is the word of God. Yes. And somebody said, how can I be sure that the Bible is the word of God? I know that the Bible is the word of God because the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short. Of the glory of God. All. If it was the white man that wrote this Bible. We say all black men have sinned. If it was black men that wrote the Bible. They say all white and other colors have sinned. But if I say all have sinned. All have sinned. And fallen short of the glory of God. And when you read the Bible. You see that holy men of God speak. As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Because men that God used had weaknesses. And when you look at their weaknesses, many people, if you are writing a book, you will not write your weaknesses in the book. Everybody wants to be a hero. To be a superman. I read the Bible and I saw a place whereby they say, Jesus wept. He's God and he wept. So it's okay to weep. He was carrying his cross and he fell and he couldn't continue. So when you are carrying the cross of life, you can also fall and get up. <laughs> yeah. You see, so you see all this truth, uh, reality that are uh, in the Bible. Peter denied Jesus three times, and he wrote some of the scripture. If it were, if it was me, say please, don't put that place where I denied Jesus. Let how, how would you say the chief apostle? Deny Jesus. But it's written there. Peter denied Jesus three times. Before a little girl. Not before a mighty army. A little girl. So the word of God is so true. The earlier we realize it and hook ourselves up to it and draw the virtue that is in it for us, the better our life will be. Because it's a life transforming word that can change your life. It can take you from where you are to where you ought to be. But if you believe it, you're going to see. And that's the assurance to go. You can go from poverty to riches, from sickness to health, from failure to success by reading the Bible. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we have testimonies of conversion of people. Yeah, I myself, the Bible has, we heard in the church, it said the washing of the water by the word. He will wash you, he wash your brain. You know, many years ago when I first 
go to church, my friends say, when you go to church, they will brainwash you. But while I was reading the scripture, I found that, yeah, God actually washes your brain because there are many things in that brain yes, sir. that needs to be washed. Yes, sir. And constantly, because the brain is always gathering stuff. And our mind is the workshop of our destiny. Everything that's going to happen to you must first happen in your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so you see. So you must watch your thinking. Your future is in your thought. If you can think right, you will live right. If you can think well, you will succeed. If you can change your thinking, God can change your life. Yeah. Our life is made of our thoughts, our words, our actions. And our actions are battered by our thoughts. So whatever you do originates from your thinking. So if you can change, that's why you need something to help you to control your thoughts. Because your, our thoughts want to run wild. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. Are we together? Yes. So that was, my, that, was, that was the experience I had. And after that, of course, the devil never showed up again. <laughs> he has nothing to say anymore because, uh, yeah, and my faith boasted. Yes. Yeah. My faith boasted. I, all the things I had believed just began to rush back into my spirit. Now I believe them more. <laughs> oh yes, more. Because thank God there's assurance of God's word. Yes. Amen? Yes. So look at something here. It says, know therefore that the Lord thy God, know, maybe you don't know, yes. but know that what the Lord thy God, he is God, the almighty, the all-powerful, all-sufficient. He is also what? The faithful God. Somebody say faithful. That means he's dependable. He's reliable. He's loyal. He can be trusted. Which keepeth what? Covenant and mercy with them that love him. Don't miss that. He keepeth covenant and mercy with them that what love him. Yeah. So when you say you love God and God loves you, he will bring you to a place of covenant. And keep his commandment to what? A thousand generations. So he's a dependable God. It's not it's a uh, it's an everlasting father. And whatever he does stands forever. He keeps his covenant. So many people say God is a love. God is a God of love. You see why God put in the covenant? Because you can take advantage of love. Love can be taken advantage of. When somebody realizes that, look, you love him or her, and there is no covenant in between, some people can take advantage of the person. Even God feels we can take advantage of him. Because God is so loving. So he put the covenant in place to protect us and protect himself. Hello, somebody. Yeah. So we want to look, want to understand, because this is where the, the missing link is between the blessings of many people. When God blesses, God blesses on covenant terms. Yeah. Hallelujah. Psalm 89 verse 34, he said, My covenant will I not break nor alter the things that is gone out of my mouth. So God gives us a covenant because we can't see him. The assurance that we have with him is that when we are in a covenant, whatever he promises, he's going to keep it. Amen. Yeah, he gives us his word. Yeah. So if you want to see, if you want to experience God's blessing, then understand the covenant. That's why we're entering into a covenant. God wants to develop us this, uh, this year. And um, let's look at the life of Abraham, a covenant man. Look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Are we still together? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. God wanted to develop, when we talk about development, God wants to build you up. God wants to increase you, wants to expand you. He wants to, you know, uh, make you bigger, better, stronger than you are in every area of your life. He wants to make us more successful. He wants you to grow in wealth. 
He wants you to develop in wisdom, in strength. He wants your potential to be unleashed. Hallelujah. Amen. This is not the best of you. Amen. Yeah, you are going through a process. Yes. You're not going to remain in this state forever. Amen. God's going to take you to a better state Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why we're going to develop. Every area of our lives can develop. That means we can become better. Yes. We can increase in, in, in strength. We can have more victories. We can increase in wisdom. We can develop in every area of our lives. Can I, uh, can I hear an amen? Amen. So this is, look at God wanted to develop Abraham. And he came here and met with him in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of your country, from your kindred, from your father's house, unto a land I will show you. That's like an invitation. He says, and I will make of you what a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless you and bless uh, them that bless you and curse him that curseth you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Get out of your country. That means your familiar uh, comfort zone. Your familiar zip code, where you are born, where you grew up, come out from that place. Come out from your kindred, what you can relate with, what you really know, what you think, you know, your kindred are people you know, you understand. Most time, God, God's way are complex. Hello, somebody. <laughs> yeah, God's way are complex. They are not necessarily, they are a mystery. The Bible call it a mystery. It might tell you to do something you don't even, can relate with. This is a man telling him to come out of his country, come out of uh, his kindred from his father's house. Come out from all your, uh, what's it called? All you grew up knowing in your life, your familiar life, your father's house, what you are, the way you are brought up. If God wants to change your life, you have to change all those things. You have to come out of, you know, oh, in my country, this is how they do some things. You know, every country has a way they do something. Every kindred, this is our family, you know. Uh, the month is coming out, they'll be having a family reunion. Our family, this is the, our family is dysfunction. They did, they do this, they do this. Then, from your father's house, this is what my father has taught me. This, when I was growing up, my father never, I never saw my father cook. He said, men don't cook. In fact, he doesn't want you to be in the kitchen. He, he said, the only thing you go to the kitchen is to ask for your food and go to the table. You don't go to the kitchen. <laughs> if I didn't leave that right now, Sometimes my wife would say, your food is in the refrigerator. Can you just take it yourself? I would say, my father, my father said, I can't go to you. <laughs> I'll be starving. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yeah. So you have to come out from the things you are familiar with. He said, and I want to, to a land I will show you. Yeah. It's not a land that you know, a land I will show you. And the Bible says, Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. Do you know he had a choice? Yeah. He could say, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> because the God that is talking to him, he can't see him. He's talking to you in your spirit. That's how God, nobody, Abraham never saw God. He spoke to him the same way he's going to be speaking to you. You have to just believe it in your spirit. Yeah. Abraham could say, I'm not going nowhere. But he departed as the Lord has said. Hello, somebody. Amen. Then look at Genesis 17, verse 1 to 14. And I want us to see this. Because I want you to get a picture of the covenant, how God entered a covenant with Abraham. So we can, before we can switch into the covenant I want to look at today. Genesis 17, 1 to 14. Are you there? It said, when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be that what? Perfect. And I will make what my covenant between me and you. And we multiply you exceedingly. Does that sound like development? I will multiply you, make you more in wealth, 
health, you know, abilities, strength, victory on everything you want. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, what? My covenant is with you. Thou shalt be a father of many nations. He was barren at this time, at that age. He's never had a child, but God was saying, I will make you fruitful. You're going to have children. And you're going to have many children that are going to be like nations. Neither shall thy name be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. Abraham means father of none, but Abraham means father of nations. And I will make you exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings, greatness. I prophesy greatness is going to come out of your life. Yeah, God's going to, there's greatness in you that God wants to bring out. There's greatness in us that God wants to bring out. And I will make nations and kings shall come out of you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed in their generation for what an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed and I will give unto thy seed after the, the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan could you see expansion there yeah all the land of Canaan I will give it to you for an everlasting possession and I will be their God and God said unto Abraham thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and your seed after thee in their generation then he gave him the term of the covenant this is the covenant which you shall keep between me and your seed after thee you see that he gave him the term give me the new living translation please because of time the same scripture is it the new living translation this is the covenant that you and your descendant must keep each one of you must be what circumcised very powerful um do you have the, okay do you have the voice you don't have the voice okay it says in another in my own living translation maybe do you have living bible it said this is your response okay i think we should keep going on keep going on here yeah okay yeah you personally and all your posterity have what this continual responsibility yeah so every covenant puts a responsibility on us every promise of god puts a responsibility on us don't expect god to bless you while you do nothing that's the greatest deception because covenant every covenant has covenant what responsibilities every blessing comes with a covenant responsibility many people claim the blessing but they don't respond to their responsibility that's why they say oh ah, where is god did god not say he would god say here yeah, i say what i'm going to say but did you do your part do you understand that that's the difference in many people who, you know because a whole lot of people are into deception and the greatest deception is self-deception if somebody deceive you you didn't know but when you deceive yourself it's worse <laughs> yeah and people have self-deception because when you know the truth and you don't do it and you are expecting your story to change you are deceiving yourself yes, hallelujah Amen. yeah Oh man, I've seen many things. I, I'm, I'm sure you two you have seen many things with many people. Many people have self-deception. So I said, God's going to bless me. I said, did you apply for a job? Financial blessing. I said, did you have a job? He said, no, I'm believing God to bless me. God said, it will, whatever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. Now you are laying your hands on nothing. You are actually prospering, but you are prospering. <laughs> Do you see that? Aha. Yes. Uh -huh. He said, whatsoever you do it shall prosper. But now when you are not doing anything and you are saying, God, yeah, I actually had somebody say, somebody, a man of God prophesied to me. He came to, they came to my office. One of, I can't ever forget, two ladies, they came and said, a man of God prophesied. We're going to be blessed. I have not seen anything. So I say, we're going to prosper. We're going to fund the kingdom. So I say, so what job are you doing? Say, I'm not working. I say, what do you mean you're not working? Say, no, I'm not, I, do you have to work? I say, 
that you need to go get a job. <laughs> so that when you are doing something, you can believe that God will bless what you are doing. It will produce more than they pay you on the job. Hello, somebody. When you continue, because your, your, our job is to give us seed to sow. And when you sow seeds, you have harvest from your seeds. Hello, somebody. And the harvest is always greater than the seed. But if you have no seed to sow, you can never have harvest. Wow. Yeah. And many people are believing God for harvest while they have no seed. And many aspects of our life are connected to that. So he's saying to us, he's saying to Abraham, this is your responsibility. Continue. What translation is this? TLB. Okay. Keep going. Thank you. Are we together? Yeah. Verse 11. Now I'm going to lean on you. He said, the first king of his penny shall be cut off. This will be the proof that what? They accept this covenant. So that means they could choose not to accept the covenant. And God can't force his blessing on anybody. When you accept, it's like a contract. When you accept, then God is committed. Then both of you are now in partnership. We are in covenant. But when a person does not accept, then he cannot expect God to Abraham and say, this, this will be the proof that what they accept this covenant. Keep going. Every man shall be circumcised on the eighth day after his but This applies to every foreign born slave as well as everyone born in your household. This is a permanent part of this contract. <laughs> God goes into contract with us amazingly. And it applies to all what? Your posterity. This is where we come in here. Everybody, because if we are Christ, we are Abraham's seed, we are here to the same promise. Go on, please. And all must be circumcised. Your bodies will be thus marked as participants in, in my what? Everlasting covenant. Anyone who refuses these terms shall be cut off from his people. For they have violated. That's God speaking. So this is what makes us sure. If God cannot lie. If human beings violate their contract. You can sue them. You can petition heaven. And say God I have done what you have said. And when you show God. Like Ezekiah did. God will, God will stand and say look. I cannot lie. Yeah. When people are not sure, will God bless me? Why you are not sure is because you have not done your part yeah. of the contract. Once you do it, you see, our faith has the legal dimension. This, anything contract is legal. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Then God added, regarding Sarah, your wife, her name is no longer Sarah, but what? Sarah princess. That means she's, too, she's going to be fruitful. And I will bless her and give her a son from you. Yes, I will bless her richly. You see, development. Make her the mother of nations. Many kings shall be among your posterity. Many kings. You are a king. There's a king in you. I said there's a king in you. Someone said there's a king in me. Keep going. And Abraham threw himself down and worshiped before the Lord. But inside, he was laughing in disbelief. He said, he said it, was, it, was, it looked impossible. He said, me? me? He said, me, 100 years old. And Sarah to have a baby at 90. That's a miracle. But the covenant can make anything possible. Because the God we serve is a God of possibility. There is nothing he cannot do. Nothing is too difficult for God. Keep going. And God said, yes. To him, yes. Do bless. Abraham said to God, yes, do bless Ishmael because he had another son from a baby mama there. <laughs> no, God replied, that isn't what I'm saying. I'm saying Sarah shall bear you a son. You will name him Isaac. Laughter. The way you are laughing now, you're going to laugh. Real laughter. You're going to see the miracle come to pass. Somebody's going to laugh in the name of Jesus. And I will sign my covenant with him forever. So the covenant has to be signed and agreed on. Amen. 
This is the key to the supernatural. This is the missing link in the life of many Christians. Many people are going about claiming they are Christians because they have the love of God, but they have not entered into covenant with God. And God is waiting for when you're going to enter into a covenant with him so that he can begin to bless you. The difference between those who get blessed, those who receive increase, those who are multiplied, those who succeed, is those who have entered into a covenant with God. God has given us a promise of development, then there's a responsibility on us. Look at this, look at the next verse there. As for Ishmael, I will bless him also just as you have asked. I will cause him to multiply and become a great nation. Twelve princes shall be among his prosperity. Could number that one. But my contract is with Isaac, who will be born to you and Sarah next year about this time. Before this year is over, many of us will have great breakthroughs. We're going to have great visitations of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I wish your amen can be believing. The next verse. Then the conversation, then that ended the conversation and God left. Look at the next verse. Then that very day, you see Abraham took Ishmael his son and every other male born in his house from his house and cut off their foreskin just as God has told him. He did exactly what God said the very day. The very day. Many people continue to deliberate. Do you think we should do this? What do you think? <laughs> Do you think this is good? Do you think God is going to keep his promise? You, that was not Abraham. Hello, somebody. He took the covenant and he obeyed God the very day. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the New Testament, we have a better covenant under a better promise. So we said these promises are fantastic. The one in the New Testament, they are more fantastic. Look at Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 to 10. Are you getting something this morning? Yeah. This is the way you walk with God. You walk with, because we don't see God, doesn't mean God does not exist. So God is taking care of us and taking care of himself. So that nobody abuses the love of God. And take God for granted. You know, many people think if I cry, God will respond because of my cry. <laughs> tears actually don't move God. Yeah. Have you ever seen people use tears for manipulation? The great, the easiest thing to use for manipulation is tears. <laughs> One day, on a Sunday, a pastor's wife slapped her husband, the pastor, and she called the senior pastor. <laughs> My husband just slapped me. And the man was there like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> she was crying. Thank God for women. Women have more tears than men sometimes. She was crying. And the man was looking in disbelief. Then she said, where is your husband? He said, it's right here. He said, give him the phone. No, no, I don't give him the phone. I said, I said, give him the phone. She was crying. And she wouldn't give the guy the phone. So the pastor said, okay, hold on. So he called the pastor's phone. And said, where is he? I'm in the house. He said, what happened? He said, my wife just slapped me. He said, no, 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 no. He said, she just slapped me now. <laughs> And she's crying, and I'm right here watching. And the guy is so can say, I'm watching. She's just crying, I'm just watching like a movie. But she's crying. It was a dilemma. So people can use tears to get anything they want. So people think, oh, if I cry to God, 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 God say, yeah. I said, but. Have you fulfilled your part of irresponsibility? Because God doesn't want us to be irresponsible. Any faith that delegates all responsibility to God is an irresponsible faith. 
God wants us to grow with responsibility. So he gives us demand, tells us what he expects from us so that we can do. That's how we grow. You can't grow without accepting responsibility. Yeah. The difference between a mature person and an immature person is responsibility. Yeah. When you go to the bank and they give you credit, pay the due balance every month and we're going to give you more. Then, voila, 1K, blew it. Month end came, excuse me, Mr. Man, we've not heard from you. Blah, 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Say, oh, they messed up my credit. They. <laughs> they messed up your credit. No no no. <laughs> and then you get people who also who also want to want to fool you. Say, we can repair your credit. Listen, the only way you repair your credit is by paying your bills. Oh, take it from me. Yeah, they, they, those people have known that you are not responsible, so they want to milk you out of your little money because if you not pay the right guys, they're going to pay them. Yeah. But when you pay and they see you are paying, then they're going to come and say, oh, we see that you are good. We gave you 1K. We increase it. Then say, oh, wow, my credit has increased. Oh, will you do better? We increase it more. Why are they doing it to you? It's because they don't even know your face. They don't even know you. But there is something that is connecting both of you. That is what? The covenant. Amen. The contract. You are doing your part. Yes. It's the same thing with God. Amen. The more we do our part, the more God says this person is responsible. He said, the hair as long as it's a child, different nothing from a servant. Even though it's a lot of all. But when he becomes mature, then we can commit things into his hand. God's going to commit great things into your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Are we still together? Yes. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. Look at that now. It says, but now, what? He had obtained a more excellent ministry, but how much also, speaking of Jesus, a better, uh, what? By how much also he has what? Is the mediator of what? A better covenant. So Jesus came to establish what? A better covenant. Which was established what? On better promise. Someone say better. better. So things are going to get better for you and I. Better. Things are going to be greater and better. Amen. So we are in the covenant of the better. Someone say better. Amen. God wants to better our lives. Amen. That's why he gives us the covenant. Amen. To bring us into better things. Next verse. For if the first covenant has been faultless, then should no place have been sought for what? The second. For finding fault with them. You see, the fault is never with God. The fault is always with us. Somebody say the fault, say the fault is never with God. Every time you are dealing with God, don't go and say, oh God, why are you? Doing? No, no, just say, oh God, what do I need to do? <laughs> why am I missing it? Just show me where I'm missing it. Because he is constant. He said, behold, said, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when, they, when I took them by the hand and led them out of the Egypt. Because they continued not what? In my covenant. They, they broke the covenant. And God said, I regarded them not. Once, they, once everywhere a person stopped believing God, that's where God stopped blessing the person. Yeah. They continued, God said, also, I cannot regard you no more. Yeah. So you can go all the way. I can't see, I can't wait to see what your life will become. Amen. When you sign into, when you begin to walk in contract with God. I can't see. You see, many of us that are hearing this word, my prayer for us is that we will be able to go all out with God so that we can prove to people that our God cannot lie. Not that we're going to be making our God look like a liar. Yes. Meanwhile, it is us that have the issue. Yes. And people are looking at us and say, are they not serving God? How come I'm not seeing the blessing in his life? Meanwhile, you, we, they, we have, or they have, I won't say not any of us here. They have the form of godliness, but they are denying the 
power. They are denying the ways of God. Yeah. That's why never look at somebody else to be the yastic for the faithfulness of God. Yeah. You be the person that's going to stand for God and say, look, I want to prove him. I want to prove God. Amen. Yeah, since I met God, I said, I want to prove God. And I've been proving him. God has never failed. Amen. He has done incredible things that I cannot, if, sometimes I can't share my testimonies because they are unbelievable. You can't believe it. But he is a way maker. Yes. He is a deliverer. Yes. He is a healer. He is a blesser. He can do things that no man can, can do for you. When you walk in the covenant. Yeah. Many fantastic things that God can do in our life. Many fan, fantastic I'm here today many years ago. The Lord said, I had a factory. I had my business. God said, I want to take you to the nations. I said, the nations? I don't even have no passport. I've never traveled anywhere. He said, yeah, I want to take you to the nations. I said, what do I need to do? He said, I have an assignment for you. Close your factory. The factory, I said, my children's children will benefit from this factory. They, because it was doing well. God said, close it up. And I did. When I went to tell my clients and workers that I'm closing the factory, they say, are you mad? I say, yes, I think so. Because <laughs> they say, where are you going? I say, to the nations. They say, which nation? I say, I don't know, but the nations. <laughs> you are laughing just like you are laughing like this. They were examining me to see if I'm normal. Yeah. But I know I've heard God. And thank God, he never failed in his word. That's I, I get to be here now. Yeah. But you see, I, I had an option to say, God, are you for real? <laughs> what if I close my factory and I don't get no visa to anywhere? Uh, I will tell you, it's your nation, not a nation. <laughs> The nation you are in, is it not a nation? <laughs> Start from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. What's the next verse there? Verse 10. Look at it. It said, For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel, including us, after those they sell. I will put what? My laws into their mind. Yeah. And I will write them what? in their heart. I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. So God said, I will put my word in your mind. So what is supposed to be in your mind? The word of God. Amen. The word of God. The law talks of the principles. Don't look at law as static. It's principles of God. He will put his principles in our mind. And I think we're sharing on Wednesday for those who are in church. He said, you know, you have to be covenant minded. A person lives by the way his mind functions. If your mind does not believe anybody is true, it's not that people are not sincere. It's your mind that thinks so. He said to the pure, all things are pure. You know, some people say nobody is straight, everybody is crooked. It's not that everybody is crooked. It's your own thinking that is making you think everybody is crooked. If you change your thinking, you're going to begin to see that people are actually sincere. <laughs> Do you understand that? Yeah, our, our mind, the way a person's mind works, some people's mind have been, that's why we say we have to renew our mind. Some people's mind have been so wired that they can't trust nobody. Nobody, nobody. Say, I, see, I've seen deception in my life. I can't trust nobody, including God. Then you can't work with God because God is say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. You have to trust in the Lord. So you have to learn to trust again. Yeah. If you have never trusted anybody. So that you also can be trusted. <laughs> Hello somebody. So he said he'll put the principle. So our, our ability to operate the covenant is to have a principle mind. A mind that a covenant mind. Somebody say a covenant mind. See, begin to see God as a covenant keeping God in your thinking. 
So that every time you are relating with God and you also be a covenant person, if you cannot break the covenant, God will never break his own. But if you if you say you can if you are crooked, God will show you he's more he's been here before you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah it, I think there's a psalm like that that he said that in Psalm 18, verse 24, there are about it. Can we look at Psalm 18? There's a psalm that he said there. He said to the, uh, uh, what's it called? To the faithful, or to the, you know, God is faithful, but to those who are not, he, he also. Uh, Oh, Lord, help me to find that scripture in a hurry now. So, because you are all looking for me to find that scripture. <laughs> oh. 25. Okay, what did he say? Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at, yeah, 25 and 26. All right, that's good. Thank you, my dear. He said, what? With the merciful, that will show yourself what? Merciful. To the upright man, that will show yourself what? Verse 26. With the pure that will show yourself what? With the fraud that will show yourself what? Uh huh. <laughs> God say you see you 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 crooked. Can you have um? Do you have another translation? Maybe a newer translation so we can see. Maybe NIV or something. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the wicked, you show yourself what? Hostile. It's going to be hostile. Like, you think you are lying. I'm going to be telling you, I am God. You can't play games with me. <laughs> all things are naked and open before God. Yeah. yeah, all things are open. That's 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 a guidance. Just say, oh, God, you see. Just go to God and say, God, you know, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm straight. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture in Acts chapter uh, 6 there about some one man and his wife they sold their land they were given to the church nobody told them to bring the money to the church but they saw people giving so they also wanted people to say oh these people give to the church they give to the work of god my time okay as they as they got there they decided to sell the land and hide some of the money the man and his wife agreed so when they got to church, the man came first. The wife was still shopping in the mall. <laughs> so they say, hey, Peter, man of God, this is all that we sold our land. We know the work of God is good. Here is everything. We want to honor God. Peter said, oh, wow, you're a great man. Then suddenly the Holy Spirit said, no, he's lying. He says, lying. Yeah. Then he said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, to keep part, part of the price of the land? When it was yours, it's, nobody told you to do it. But now you want to say, is, he asks, is it all of it? He said, yeah. He said, while it remained, was it not in your own? After it was so, was it not your own? So why are you, why are you lying? Just be honest. He said, you have, you have not lied to men, but unto God. He was playing games in the house of God. And when he heard this word, he couldn't believe that somebody has told on him. He just died. <laughs> he couldn't handle it. His heart failed. And after a long time, his wife came. She was coming from the mall, so she kept some of the things outside. <laughs> Say, ma'am, welcome to church. Say, yeah, we heard that You have sold your land. We did. We love the Lord. Praise God. We love the Lord. I pay my tithes. I give offering. We love the Lord. We sow our seeds. And he said, Ma'am, tell the truth. Say, no, it's the truth. God bury me witness. <laughs> and then. How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which buried their husband at the door, and they carried, and she too just fell and died. They didn't have to die. Somebody said, why did the next verse say, after that fear came on all the church? 
Yeah, everybody now began like, eh, where is this God? Let's be straight with him. Yeah. God has a way of, you know, instilling his authority and his influence among us. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what we're saying is that God is a covenant-keeping God. Did you get that? Okay. Now, I want to show you what you can do. Last, last week, we looked at what we can do to be blessed. I, I might not be able to go deeper in it this morning. I want to show you what we can do to experience enlargement. Anybody wants to be enlarged? Yes. Why are you all quiet? Yes. <laughs> you are like, and everybody wants to be enlarged. Like, <laughs> Don't, this, this is not to scare us, but to steer us up to know that, look, our God is reliable. Our God is dependable. He can bless us. He can heal us. He can prosper us. He can increase us. Are you watching what the Holy Spirit is saying? Yeah. But we have to understand so that we are not playing games because me, I want my life to be I want, I want my life to be better than it is. I want God to develop my life and I want to go where I've never been before. I want to experience what I've never seen. I want to go places with God. I want to have what God can offer. Yeah, I want to have the victory that God has promised. I want to succeed at a level that only God can make possible. How many, anybody like that here? Yeah. yeah. You want God to make you a success. Yeah. You want God to heal you. You want God to bring deliverance to your life. You want God to fill you with wisdom. Yeah. There are things we can do to develop in all these things when we follow after the covenant. So it's good for us to know it. Because the church, the church, the, the power is lacking in the church a lot because many church people are just playing games. Yeah. I used to go to a barber's shop where I used to cut my hair some time ago during the weekend. The, the, the barber, the, one, the barber that, the guy that cuts my hair, in fact, two of them, I'm still relating to both of them. One of them said he has never been to church all his life, but he came to church. He said because he said he said it's like you are serious about this God. I said, because I've seen many other pastors also come to cut their head here, but I know they are not. When I see you from the conversation, I just know you are serious with your God. I'm interested. What's the difference? He said that there's going to be. I'm not saying I'm the only prophet, but I'm saying that most people are playing games with God. Why do you want to play games with your destiny? Why do you want to play games with your life? You have only one life to live. You have to live it on purpose and get it right. Yeah. If God, if God promised me blessing, it wouldn't be on my part that I'm not getting the blessing. I would do whatever he tells me to do. Yeah, I would do whatever he tells me to do. As a pastor, I still do the same thing. That's what I want to share with you. One of the secrets of expansion today. You want to know it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Esther chapter number four. So that I can uh, uh, you know, uh, activate. What is the secret of expansion? That you want God to expand you. Acts chapter four, verse eight. I mean, I say Acts, Esther chapter four, verse eight. Esther. Glory be to God. He says, and he gave a copy of the writing of the decree that was given as usual to destroy them, to show it to Esther, and to declare unto her, to charge her, someone said to charge her, to go into the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. There was a decree to kill all the Jews. And Esther was in the king's palace as the king's bride. Her uncle sent to her and said, go tell Esther, there's a price that's been paid by the enemy of God's people to kill all the Jews. That's what the devil does. The devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil has planned to kill many people that you know, your neighbors, your colleagues, your friends, your family members. We heard that somebody was shot. 14 times. The devil is on rampage. He wants to kill many people. Now we are in 
the king's court. We are the bride of Christ. We are in the, we, God is the king of kings. We in the church, we are his bride. Now there's a call to say, please, we don't want our other relatives to die. Can you go and talk to God for us so that we will not die? Esther began to tell stories. Many reasons why she cannot talk to God. Hello, somebody. Go to verse 14 for time. Many of us have reasons why we cannot talk to God and say, pray for somebody who is connected to you that he can be saved. He say, I pray. I have to pray for myself. I have to pray for my job. I don't have time to pray for nobody. He said to her, if you all together hold your peace at this time, if you don't pray or intercede, to go to speak to the king is to pray or to intercede for God's people. Enlargement and deliverance shall come to the Jews from another place. Somebody say enlargement. enlargement. And deliverance. So what they were waiting for is what? Enlargement and deliverance. What God wants to bring to our life is enlargement and deliverance. God wants to enlarge you. Amen. I said God wants to enlarge you. Amen. Wants to enlarge your career. Enlarge your business. Amen. Enlarge your life. Amen. Yeah. But you and your father's house shall be what? Destroy. Who we'll know whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So what is the secret for our enlargement? The mystery, the covenant. Pray for lost souls. Pray for people who don't know God, that they should come to know God. Because the devil is on rampage. He wants to kill them. He wants to destroy their destiny. He wants to take them out. We are Christ's bride. The, the, this kingdom is a kingdom of mystery. We can pray for their enlargement, for their deliverance, for their salvation. Somebody say pray. pray. Or talk to me. Say pray. pray. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 6, it says, look at the scripture here. Are you still watching? It says, first of all, 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 6, prayer, supplication, intercession. Give me the scripture. Yeah, stay there. First of all, I exhort that word. First of all, what? Supplications. Someone say supplications. supplications. Prayers. Someone say prayers. prayers. Intercessions. Intercessions. And giving of that must be made for what? For all men. All people. When you see men, it's men and women. All people. Uh huh. For kings, for all that in authority. Everybody. Verse, verse 3. This is good, what? And acceptable in the sight of God. Savior. Who will have what? All people to be saved. God wants everybody to be saved. If you are saved, don't just think you are safe because you are saved. Many of us in the church, once we are saved, we don't care about our neighbors, we don't care about our colleagues, we don't care about our loved ones. That's not the reason God saved you. God saved you and I so that we can help save others. And that's the secret for our enlargement. Many people are praying, Lord, enlarge me. Lord, increase my territory. God said, if I increase your territory, of what good is it going to be? <laughs> because the big territory you have, you are the only one there. You are not thinking about people. You criticize them. You complain about them. You gossip about them. But I want their souls to be saved. God does not want any soul to perish. The covenant of enlargement is in your our number one commitment to pray for lost souls. Many people don't pray. For, when, when you come for prayer and say, we're going to pray about how you're going to get more cars, more houses. No. Everybody goes, let's pray for your neighbor. That we can do. No. <laughs> Next prayer point, please. <laughs> Let's pray for your uncle. No, 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 no. When Esther took the responsibility to pray for the people, yeah, he said, have we read the scripture? He said, we'll have all men to be saved. Yeah, 
When Esther took all responsibility to pray for the people, the Bible said the moment she stood before the king in Esther chapter 5 verse 2, the king said to her, what do you want? It shall be given to you to the half of my kingdom. She never needed to ask for half of the kingdom. Anyone who takes God's course and make it his or her own course, God will expand that person. Amen. And the most important thing to God on earth is human souls. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. Anybody still here? Yes, sir. So, if you want to see enlargement, begin to pray for souls. Esther accepted the responsibility and they gave her half of the kingdom. God wants you to have it all. Amen. If you're going to say, Lord, I'm going to ensure that everybody in my neighborhood is saved. Amen. I'm going to pray for them. You are not going to save them, but I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to do my part. But we can't be saying, God, save them. When God has entrusted their salvation yes. to us. Yes. That's where many people are missing it in the covenant. They are praying. Listen to this. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All the things you want shall be added to you. When you make God's cause your cause, you will never need to pray for enlargement. Amen. And you will never be little in your life. Amen. God will enlarge you, expand you, give you blessings you never can handle. More than you can carry. You start by praying for souls. You pray for their salvation. You pray and then you reach out to them. Every day, see it like your covenant responsibility, not a part-time job. Oh my God. You all are not talking to me now. Do you understand the covenant? So somebody says, I want God to enlarge me. You see Esther, when Esther, they, they say, look, if you don't pray, God will still do what he's going to do. He's going to bring enlargement. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. You're not going to partake of it. And she said, okay, I'm going to do it. And she went before the king and began to intercede, began to pray. Talk to the king about the people. The king, before she even said the word, the king offered her half of the kingdom. When God sees your heart that you are willing to pray for souls, he's going to bless you beyond your mind. He's going to bless you beyond limit. He's going to take you where you cannot go. Yeah, he's going to expand you. He's going to increase you. Yeah. That's the secret. That's the secret. And amazingly, that's our responsibility. Can I hear an Amen. Many of us are in the church. Lord, bless me. Bless me even more. Bless me again. Bless me more. God is not against the blessing. He wants to bless you exceedingly. But you have to do your part of praying for others. The Bible says, for time, I'll just, maybe I'm going to continue. Say, God turned the captivity of Job, Job 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friend. If you can sacrifice yourself and be concerned about somebody, God's going to turn your captivity around. God's going to turn your situation around. A turn around is going to come into your life. Look at it. And the Lord what turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for himself, and the Lord what gave him twice as much as he had. Amen. Double for the trouble in his life. God can double and increase and enlarge you and me if we make Jesus. our friends the salvation of souls our priority Jesus. yeah that's the covenant many people are praying you see I, I i i've been in the church system and most time i see church people they are praying lord father expand me increase my territory you won't need to pray no prayer like that when you say god let souls be saved. Let people in my neighborhood, let my family members, let my friends, let my colleagues, I want to see them saved. I'm praying for them. And I'm going to also go to the next man to give them a tract, a flyer. Talk to them about the love of God. And watch where God will take you. God will do things for you that you yourself can never imagine in your, in your own life, in your wildest imagination. 
But many people, that's a covenant responsibility. And I know you are going to take on it in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Our time is fast spent. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, but we're going to stop here. Did you get anything? Yes. I want to show you many. This, so when someone says, well, how can I be enlarged? Just tell yourself, I want to be a soul winner. Amen. A soul winner is somebody who wins souls, who preach the gospel, who pray for the people. Because before you go out, you have to soak yourself in prayer. God, let me meet the right people whose life you want to change, whose destiny you want to transform. Yeah, the most important commodity for God on earth is the human soul. He said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? God is interested in the soul of everyone you know, your colleague, your friend, your neighbor, everybody. Make it your priority. Make it your priority. Never be content one day and say, I'm going to go out without winning a soul. He said, because God wants men everywhere, people everywhere to be saved. Everybody. Nobody. Black, white, old, young. Everybody needs to hear the gospel. That's why Jesus came. You know why Jesus, God said, the Bible said God has given Jesus a name that is above every name. Is it because he's the son of God? No. Because he came to die for souls. So God, that's why God also highly exalted him. You can never be about soul and never be enlarged. Materially, financially, spiritually, you can never be up. That's the covenant. But many people are not aware of it. Maybe you are hearing for the first time. Know it. Jesus. Know it. Because I believe expansion is coming into your life. Amen. Oh, you see, you're not shouting amen now. I say expansion is coming into your life. Amen. Enlargement is coming to you amen. in the name of Jesus. God is about to increase you and expand you. You have the secret now. Commit to winning souls. Amen. To telling somebody about the love of God so that they don't go to hell. So that Satan does not destroy their lives. Amen. Pray for them. Be passionate about it and see how God will take you places you've never been. Amen. Oh yeah. There is nothing I, I don't qualify to be here to be talking to you. The only thing that brought me here that opened the door for me is what I'm sharing with you. I never pray to travel anywhere. I just say, God, anywhere you want to a soul, you want to use me, please use me. Anywhere. And God said, America. America? Eh. <laughs> People say, oh, wow, you're in America. Yeah, get her, get her, get her. Lord, open the door for America. What are you coming to do here? To come for dollars? You are, you are wasting your time. You lost your mind. You are here to, for souls. And you have more dollars than you can ever need in your life. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you the truth. I say, when I, share, I don't like to share my testimony because there's no, there's no need. But when you are after God's business, God will be after your own business. And God, yeah, when you do God's business, God will do your business. And he will do it better than you can do it. Oh, yeah. He will do it better than you can do it. But many people are not concerned about souls. You don't pray for no souls. You, you come into church on Sunday, we'll give you flyers. You don't even pick it. I can't go anywhere. If I go out without a flyer in my pocket, it's like I'm naked. Yeah, I, I develop a covenant mindset. It's not, it's not, I, somebody say covenant mindset. Because I know that when I do this, God's going to take care of me. And I know that he is the only one that can take care of me in a way I can't take care of myself. So I must be about his business. Yeah. He said, am I doing it for, for blessing? Why not? Do you do anything for free? <laughs> Is there anything you do for free? Everything you do has a, you, you, there's something you want to get from it. Even if you don't get money, you want to get a sense of uh, significance. You want someone to say thank you. <laughs> you always do something for a motive. So do it to please God. Yeah. Did you get that? Yes. Are we happy? Yes. Are we going to win souls? Yes. Hey! I said, are we going to win souls? Hey, your neighbor, your colleague, you are not clapping, you are not shouting, you are not excited. You don't want them saved, you don't want your family members saved. Come on, clap, shout, scream, celebrate in the name of Jesus. Jump, hallelujah.
Yeah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yeah. Look at Trey. Thank God for Miss Lola. Always winning souls. I can't forget the day we met Miss Lola. In the, we were going somewhere. We said, no, in the hot sun. We said, let's go to farmer's market. We don't even have anything to buy. Let's go there as if we are shopping. And since that time, we connected her with her. And look at how many people God has, through her, God has connected to the church. Yeah. Souls. Souls. Same with Baba 22. We, that's how we, you have to be. Well, Mike, Michael is here today. The same way I met you in the, in the parking lot. Don't be saying, when you are going, people say, can I just say, when, I, when you put the flyers on, they will throw it away. Yeah. Some people will sit and just throw it. I say, leave it there. <laughs> Somebody that needs it will pick it. Except if corn of seed fall to the ground and die, abide alone. Leave it there. Somebody will say, look at Mama Gemini and uh, Miss Jennings. The same way, they, try, they came out of the restaurant, they saw a flyer on their card. And they picked it. It took many times, but they, they showed up. <laughs> and they're happy that they do it. Because are you not happy that you're in church today? Amen. Are you not happy you're hearing? Many more people will be happy because of this. And many more people are just there sitting at home. They are watching. They are tailgating for football that will start at 6.30. 6 we will still go and watch it. We will still do two services. I will still meet the game. I don't miss anything. I will still see when they are going to take the trophy, everything. And I didn't do it. I didn't miss any. Yes, sir. Yeah. And but God's going to reward you yes. for doing it. God's going to reward us. How many of us are going to sign a contract today? Oh, I'm not seeing your hand up. Say, Lord, Lord. I want to be about souls. Oh, lift up your hands. We want to pray. We want to make a prayer of commitment. Abraham, that self same day. That self same day. Yeah. We're going, you want to learn how to do it, but just make a commitment first. Don't worry. You can just tell somebody the way any the way you're caught you that God is good. You have heard something enough today. Something has happened in your life that you can share with somebody. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, I receive the grace. I receive the grace. I receive grace, oh God. I receive grace. I make a commitment. I, I come into a covenant with you today to be a soul winner. Everybody that comes in contact with me must hear this good news. Whatever they do with it is their business. But I'm going to pray that they will be saved, that they will turn to the Lord. Open your mouth and say, God, this is the covenant. This is the covenant. And it's your covenant for enlargement. This is your secret for enlargement. This is how God is going to enlarge you. Karimba Senke Telemanta Iramben Tolina Maya let God hear your voice open up your mouth declare to God say Lord I'm excited thank you for speaking to me thank you for speaking to me I receive grace I receive grace Father thank you for giving grace to every one of us here Thank you for the baptism of grace. Thank you for the baptism of grace. Thank you for the baptism of grace. Our neighbors, our colleagues, our friends, our loved ones, our family members, people we don't even know, they will hear this gospel because of us. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for sharing every heart. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice, thank you for sharing our heart. Thank you for lighting a fire in us. Many of us have never known this before, but now we know. And we're going to do better. We thank you, mighty God. Mashaka takata. Shaka takataka. Thank you for love for humanity. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for two sets of people and will be done for today. Maybe you are hearing this message. You yourself, you are not born again yet. You are not yet saved. It's important for you to get saved. So that you can help save others. To be saved means to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. 
he said if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you shall be saved i want to give you an opportunity to make that confession today to make this confession between you and God and say Lord I receive your forgiveness I receive your love and I thank you for coming into my life so I can enlist for your assignment all head are bowed, all eyes are closed if that is you or you have done said this prayer before but you drew back or you want to reconnect to God you want to rededicate your life so that you can be more effective in the hand of God say this prayer with me mean it in your heart say Lord Jesus today I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. I acknowledge I'm a sinner, but I ask you to please forgive me my sin. Give me a new beginning. Write my name in your book of life. Thank you for dying for me. Heavenly Father, thank you for accepting me now as your child. Thank you for saving me. If you are rededicating your life, I rededicate my life to, to you today. And I receive grace to live for you. And I ask you to live in me and through me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. If you said that prayer, please lift up your right hand. I want to pray for you. God bless that hand. God bless all these hands. Father, thank you for all these hands. Yes, lift it very high. It's a thing of joy. No one can come but those who me draw. Thank you for all these hands. I thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. The Lord, I ask that as their hands are lifted, that their lives are raised to a new level. In the name of Jesus. You're missing one hand here. Makabala Baba. I ask that you write their names in the book of life. I ask that their sins are forgiven. I break Satan's hold and influence over their lives from today. I enlist them, O oh God, as your soldiers in the name of Jesus Christ that will wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness and rescue many more people even as they have been rescued thank you for grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ God bless you, you can put your hand down a little pamphlet was put in your hand read it and I'm going to talk to you after the service just share some powerful things with you before you go if you are watching online and you also give your heart to the Lord I want to pray for you I pray that in the name of God that same grace is upon you I want to send that material to the same materials to you that you receive in the house what it means to be born again anywhere you are in, in the world just email me my email address is info at hoffan.org info at h-o-f-f-a-n.org God bless you God bless you listen to this I want to pray for anyone who is sick. The Bible says they went everywhere preaching the word and the Lord was working with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders. We serve a God that is a healer, a God that is a deliverer. If you are sick in any part of your body, please come. I want to pray for you quickly. Come quickly. Yeah, I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be healed in the mighty name. God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. The oil there, thank you. For these ones who are sick in their body, I ask, oh God, right now, in the name of Jesus, that your healing power locate every person present here today. I ask, oh God, that the hand of the enemy is broken. I speak recovery of your health. I speak to every tissue, every organ, every fiber in your body. I command restoration and I command recovery. Jesus Christ makes you whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ makes you whole. We command sickness to go. We command health to be restored. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Makaya Mashaka Takababa. We speak heal, healing and health to your body. I command sickness to go. I command total recovery and health and restoration of your health. Be every with whole in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Mayaka Tulabasha Katababa. We speak healing and health to your body. We take authority over spirit of infirmity. Command you to go right now. And we decree health and healing for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The power of God make you whole. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing and health to your body. To the body of your son right now in the name of Jesus. I command health strength to be restored. I command healing, total recovery for you 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Anyone that has any challenge in the name of Jesus Christ, I, I pray, decree, let it be turned in your favor. I say, let it be turned in your favor. Whatever the situation, it will turn in your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command it to turn in your favor. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the situation begin to turn in your favor. Everywhere you go from today, let everything work in your favor. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Are you happy, church? Let's give the Lord a big, big clap of it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a blessing, what a blessing. Is that how the best clap you can keep to the Lord today? The secret of enlargement has been given to you. The covenant of enlargement and expansion. God's going to develop you and enlarge you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, we're going to do one more thing before we go. We're going to honor God with our substance. The Bible says in Proverbs 9, 3, verse 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase, so your barns can be filled with plenty and your presses will burst forth with new wine. Somebody say plenty. plenty. Yeah, how many people want plenty? Yeah, when we honor God with our substance, then God will give us plenty. Amen. It begins with our tithe. Your tithe is 10% of your income. It is holy and set apart to God. Every time you make money, give God 10%. And God will bless the 90. He will open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing. You will not have room enough to receive it. He will rebuild the devourer for your sake. Amen? Amen. And also, we're going to take um, the mission offering. Oh, what a day. Yeah, we're going to give towards the mission. I want you to take an offering... Uh, extra offering for the mission. Additional, I won't say extra, additional offering for missions. Mission means we win souls. We are all about souls. We, we, we do many things in this ministry just to reach people. We keep sowing the seed, tracks, flyers, yard signs, uh, social media ad, FM TV live, our app, everything we do just to make sure people are saved. There is no, uh, no cost that is too much to get souls saved. And God's going to give you plenty of money so we can win many souls. Hallelujah. I realize that politicians say you can't even win an election without having money. In your, yeah. So if you can't win an election without having money, how can you win a soul or win souls without having money? So God's going to put more money in our hands. That's why I encourage you to be a tighter so that God can open the windows of heaven. Don't hold back your tight so that the blessing can pour, so that we can have more resources to do God's work. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. You can give your offering by going to the website, hoffan.org. You can give by cash. You can give, if in the church, you can use your debit card, credit card slip. You can give cash. You can give, uh, use cash app, Zelle, text to give. Go to the website, hoffan.org. All the information are available. The Lord will bless and honor our faith in Jesus' name. Let's lift up our hands or lift up our offerings. Father, I want to thank you today for this opportunity you've given unto us today. Lord, to bring our tithes, O oh God, and Lord, to bring offering for the mission. Today you've told us the importance of souls. I pray for every tither today, O oh God, that you open the windows of heaven over the lives of our tithers. Pour our blessings that... They will not have room enough to receive it. Amen. Rebuild the devourer for the sake of our titles. We pray that harvest will meet harvest in the life of our titles in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you bless all titles with creativity for work creation, strategies for work creation that will attract many more resources, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I also pray for everyone giving towards the mission today. Lord, I'm asking, oh God, as you have saved our souls, let the souls of our family members, our Lord ones, be saved. Let our own souls also be preserved. Amen. We thank you, Father, for giving us this seed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone giving a worship offering. Honor the faith of every giver. Let the seed that we sow today be, come back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, cause men to give to our bosom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 